Um, and <laughs> so welcome, Kelly Key. I'm going to let you introduce yourself and um, take it away. So I will stop sharing and uh, welcome everybody who's here. Great. Thank you so much. Wow. So many amazing resources you have to provide. That's We are working hard here. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. It's not quite as early here in Illinois. We are, uh, it's a little after 10 here, so I've been awake for a while. <laughs> um, but I usually am this enthusiastic even at 8 a.m. <laughs> but uh, as Gail mentioned, my title is Tips for Increasing Family Involvement and Supporting Follow-Through with AAC at Home. And um, as, as Gail mentioned, my name is Kelly Key, and my primary role here in Barrington is the Assistive Technology Coordinator. I've been in the field of special education for over 26 years, and uh, 24 of those years have been here in Barrington School District. And I provide all of the assistive technology consultations, considerations, and trainings in all academic areas, um, our, our academic areas, communication, access, um, you know, having the ability to access the curriculum. My background is a special education teacher. I taught for nine years, and then I became an administrator. And um, I was told that if I wanted to be the AT coordinator, I needed to get my type 75. So I was an administrator and the AT coordinator for 13 of the 18 years that I've done AT. <laughs> um, and then I begged and begged and begged and now I'm I'm full time assistive technology and I'm so excited because I can do so many more things like what I'm sharing with you today. Um, Kelly, I, yes. I know you said a, a whole questions, but can you tell us what a type 75 is? Oh, sure. That's my um, your educational leadership certificate. So to be able okay. to be a school administrator. Okay, yeah, great. So I oversaw the, more. Oh, go ahead. The other question I had was um, about how many students does Barrington have? It's um, the size of the district has such an effect on. Oh, yes. Excellent question. And that actually, I think, is on one of my next slides. We have oh, okay. um, over 10, just about 10,000 students. And I'll go over a little bit about what that looks like. We are a unit school district. And so I cover students from early childhood through their 22nd birthday. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I do travel. I'm the 1AT coordinator for the district. As I mentioned, I work early childhood through our transition program. So regardless of what level of students you work with, this is all applicable. And um, this is my email as well as my Twitter handle. If you have any questions afterwards, please reach out to me. Um, sounds like you guys are good to go as far as the handouts. I do want to mention that the handouts are in a Google Drive folder and there is a, a link specifically to my folder. I have a variety of resources I'm going to share today that I've put in the folder, but if there's something I go over that you don't see in the folder, just shoot me an email and let me know. I'm so happy to share all of this. And um, as I was just saying that we have approximately 10,000 total students. We have um, an early learning center, eight elementary schools, two middle schools, a high school, and then our transition center for our students from 18 to 22. So just a little bit more about our district before I jump into parent resources, because I think it's good for you to have a background of kind of what we've put together and where we're at. So um, I did start a core vocabulary initiative over 14 years ago. Um, Gail Van Tatenhoe, we used to go to a lot of her uh, trainings and we drank the core Kool-Aid and we're so excited to implement it. And now it's really just spread like wildfire all over the US and beyond. Um, and so, and it's, it's wonderful because I even get to present with her now on all the things that are working. So, um, so it's been going strong for over 14 years. Here's a little bit more about what that looks like. Uh, we immerse our students' lives with core words, personal fringe vocabulary, and of course, the alphabet. We have universal low-tech boards with activity and location-specific fringe vocabulary. And we model on these all day, throughout the day, as much as possible, and as much as and natural as possible <laughs> as well. And students are immersed in core vocabulary as soon as they enter our program at three years old. And we have portable core boards and large display boards. You can see some of the images on the right. Staff model on the boards and devices and use essential partner skills that we do a lot of training on um, to encourage communication. And we do utilize Joy Zabala's set framework to meet the teams and families um, to meet, we meet with them. And I'm gonna go over that whole process and what that looks like for individual AAC for students. 
Um, there is a lot of buzz about a systems first, a language system first approach to um, AAC and um, using more of a tiered system, it, like an MTSS tiered system when it comes to AAC considerations. So I wanted to just share with you a visual of what ours looks like. Um, so tier one, that's where students, you know, any student entering here at three years old at our early learning center, um, they are all provided with universal core boards. Um, some students have individual boards that they carry with personal fringe. Other, um, we have boards everywhere around the classrooms and throughout the school and staff are modeling on those. So that's the first tier one exposure. Um, there's lots more to that, but that, that's a whole nother presentation. Um, and then tier two, our low tech boards are, if you saw the images before, they do, um, Originally, we created them, we started this before iPads were even around, so we created them based off of um, 84 Unity in the, uh, back in the day, it was like the Vantage communication, the Vantage light communication devices, but um, now we've evolved to, um, they look more, they look very similar, but they're based off of lamp words for life with additional fringe that we thought was important for social. And so because our low tech boards mirror LAMP, we that is more of our universal go to app if it's appropriate for students. And so our tier two is the if the universal core board is not enough students able to then if they're able to direct select, then we provide them with LAMP words for life and modeled on throughout the day, you'll get more information on this too. And then um, our tier three is, you know, if those students that need something different, alternative access, specialized equipment, then um, they're more tier three. And again, I will go over lots more of that. We do provide visual supports that are cored out and encourage language. Um, we like to say when in doubt, core it out. You'll see a bunch of op uh, visuals on the right here. Uh, I do like to note that we follow the comprehensive literacy for all approach and we definitely use caution when we're adding symbols to literacy materials that is more for that communication piece. We use the MinSpeak symbols as our anchor symbols when representing a core word visually and we lesson plan with core in mind. We also provide incentives for staff when seeing essential partner skills in action, like giving away M&Ms and putting little fun things on there that say like motivate and model, keep up the great way, keep up the great work supporting communication. We do provide a ton of professional development for staff and families. I just did a whole PD session on that um, for Illinois for our state yesterday. And we have a core vocabulary committee. That's how we started because there weren't a lot of districts that were doing this. Um, and so we had to prove that it worked. And so we have this committee and it's really evolved throughout the years. It's pretty cool. And as I mentioned, we do follow the comprehensive literacy approach uh, for literacy. And it's, and it's been amazing for our students as far as literacy and re reading and writing. Um, but we make sure that we're always embedding the communication supports throughout, which makes sense, right? And then, of course, moving on to the family piece. So we do empower our families and provide resources to support their children with communication, both at home and school. Parents are involved with AA consideration from the start using the SET framework. You're going to see that. And we provide many PD opportunities for families to increase their comfort and confidence in supporting their children with communication. You're going to learn all about that. So what I'm going to cover, I'm going to start with what um, our SET framework, how we've um, kind of tweaked what um, what joy's set framework and um, i'm going to share all that about all about that with you and um, then i'm going to go over some trainings and some creative ways that we've provided trainings coaching and networking for families and then i'm going to share a variety of resources that we provide families and this is regardless of what type of aac system a student is using so whether low you know electronic non-electronic whatever they use this is applicable so I'm going to start out with an activity that we actually do with our parents. I do this with staff and with students as well, and it's called musical pairs. I'm just going to do a little mini version with you to kind of get you thinking about, um, you know, supporting parents in your district. So how this works is when the music starts, you're going to you can stand up. Um, it's a great time to kind of get up, stretch. So when you hear the music, you can dance, you can stretch. When the music stops, I'm going to put you in a breakout room just for two minutes, and you will take turns sharing your answers to the question that I am going to show on the screen. We'll also type it in the chat when you're in the breakout room so you can um, remember what the question is. So first thing I'm going to do is cue up the music. 
We tested this out so it should play. And I want you to stand up, move, and dance for just a 30 seconds. All right, stop. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down. This is really fun. I mean, it's fun virtually, but it's really fun when we're in person and the families are all walking around the room and they're dancing around the room. And it's just a great way for families to start getting comfortable when we're doing a training in a large group for them to, you know, get up, move, but also just kind of start looking and talking to people. And so the best part is the next, the next part of this is you, um, if you're in person, you stop and you find a partner. So the parents find a partner that is not somebody that they know, somebody not in their family. And then they take turns answering the question that I put up on the board. When I do this virtually, I'm putting you in breakout rooms to do that. So what I'd like you to do is I'm gonna put you in random breakout rooms. And again, just for, it'll be two minutes or less, but I'd like for you to just share a little bit about who you are, what you do, and on a scale of one to 10, rate your, where you work, whether it's a school district, a, you know, facility, um, how well do you feel your parents are supported with AAC in, in your facility? So one being not so much, five being, yeah, we're rocking it and anywhere in between. Okay, so I'm gonna put you in a breakout room. I'll type that into the chat and I'll bring you back in two minutes or less. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, everyone should be coming back in. All right, so in a moment, we're going to um, talk about this, but I'm gonna jump right to the next question. So what I do is I usually have two to four questions that we do, so we do a few rotations of this, and, um, and then at the end, we all get together, and then we talk about uh, some of the answers. So guess what? It's time to get up and shake it off. One more time. All right, for the sake of time, we're going to sit down and talk about the next question. So I'm going to put you in the same breakout room. And what I'd like you to do is share what is one thing that your school, your district, your facility does to support parents of AAC users? Maybe something that you're doing that you're super proud of that works well. Um, and I'm going to put you in your breakout room. Ready, set, go. 
And if you are watching the recording of this, of course, try and um, write down your answers. Think about what you um, what your answers are to those two questions as well. All right. Well, for the sake of time, I mean, typically we give a lot more. I give more time um, to parents when we're doing this activity in their breakout rooms or to meet with one another when they pair up. So in the second, I didn't mention um, the second time around, you know, they're dancing around. When you come to the next question, they have to find another partner, but it has to be someone different than the first. And the idea is just getting them comfortable talking to the people, get to know who's there, but then also get up and move and really start thinking about what um you know where they're at so um let's go ahead if you would type in the chat just put one through five how well do you feel your parents are supported with aac in your in your facility your district three one Well, I'm seeing a lot of low numbers, but hopefully after this session today, um, you'll really feel empowered with some great ideas that are, these are just ideas that are working well with our families and, um, and hopefully then we can help that many more families. And the next one, does anyone have anything that you want to brag about? Uh, type in the chat. Is there something that, that you do to support parents that you um, is really working well? Uh, the assistance feel unsupported. Oh, I did a whole session yesterday for Illinois State, and um, it was on professional development and how to how to be very creative to fit that in. So if if you want to email me, I can always send you some info on that. Because um, yeah, our paraprofessionals are the ones that are working with students as well. That really, those are the two two people that I feel like families and paraprofessionals really need that support. All right, so moving forward, um, some of the things that I do when I work with, when I do do this in person with um, families or, or um, virtually, is I will, um, instead of having questions on the board, you know, you can put any questions that you want, you could make it so they stop and they have to model the phrase that is up on the board. Um, you know, I like it, I don't like it, I don't want to. Um, stop and answer a question on the device. So like, what's your favorite food? Tell me, you know, or um, what did you do yesterday? And they have to tell you on their child's device. Stop and talk about their greatest struggle with device implementation at home. Stop and share a tip um, that they use at home for supporting their child with AAC. Um, stop and share when they build in time for AAC use. So you can really utilize those questions with, with whatever you like. So it all does start with building relationships. And um, so you really need to go in and you need to be a coach and you need to be uh, there for the families. Um, and 
really put yourself in their place as well. Uh, I like to say to try not, don't, don't be afraid to get personal. And I like to put when appropriate, you'll see that a few times. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of times parents do appreciate when you learn their names and you, again, you're, you're making more friendships than I'm the expert and I'm telling you what to do. It's more like, no, we're on the same page. We're here to help your child. So, um, you know, being at, at a, a similar level to them versus like, I'm the one that knows it all is really helpful. Also, it ha it's, um, helpful to even learn what your child calls them, you know, Grammy, mommy, papa, ask about their other children, you know, talk about their names and what they like to do with their siblings, ask about things they like to do as a family, of course, that's huge for implementation, you know, reading stories, watching movies, going to the beach. I always try to make a personal connection with families too. Oh, you have a place in Wisconsin? So do we. Or, oh yeah, we love watching movies as a family too. Or yeah, I have two girls girls too. Um, that, that really does help. Again, you're, you're building relationships, you're building, and, and it, it really does help go a long way with AAC implementation and supporting them. And then I like to use this information all throughout our trainings and all throughout the years. I'm very fortunate that I get to work with the students' families from three years old all the way up until um, they transition at 22 years old. I purposely asked though for my office to be here at our early learning center because I want to get to know those families as soon as they come in. As soon as they come in for screenings or have their first um, meeting, I wanna get to know them and, and I will be the one traveling then throughout the district with their child. I'll be that one consistent person, which I love. Um, communicate often in a variety of ways, whether it's a home, written home note, an email, through district communication, like we use Seesaw in the district, in person at drop off or pick up, at conferences and at trainings. And what we like to do is share those positive stories and share videos, share updates on how it's going, share a tip that worked well with their child that day. And this is an example of an email. Uh, I get CC'd on all of these, which is like, it brightens my day. So a lot of our teachers and speech and language pathologists will email families on a regular basis and they'll send home videos of their child that using their AAC. That's very helpful, I think, for them implementation wise and for them to see how well they're using it at school and how much power it has is, is it, it does a lot for them. So this is a, an email that one of our speech and language pathologists sent. It says, good morning. I wanted to provide you with some video clips from a speech session with Casey. In these videos, you can see Casey attending to my modeling and using his device to request, protest, advocate during a preferred play activity. I'm so proud of him. He knows when I say time for speech to go to my office, he's also able to do this independently, like find the room. Okay. And so she sends the videos. I'm not gonna play the video for sake of time, but um, you know, this is the dad's response. Thank you for sharing. I love seeing him interact. He has been sick today, unfortunately, and has been telling us his stomach hurts on his device. It's been great to see him use, use it to talk to us. So, you know, that daily interaction, or it doesn't have to be daily, but um, to send those emails really does mean a lot to families. And again, it's a powerful training tool to see their child interacting with their peers, with their device or, and, um, and utilizing it. Um, they need to know you care about their child, of course. Show your enthusiasm and passion for what you do. It's contagious and try to be a good listener and um, get families involved from the start. So this is really my agenda, provide resources and visual supports and offer a ton of PD. So I'm gonna go in depth on all three of these areas. So getting parents on board from the start using the SET framework, as I mentioned, it's based off of uh, Dr. Joy Zabala's SET framework and how we have adapted it a little bit in our district for communication is um and go ahead and if you want in the chat if you do utilize set for aac consideration just give me a give me a yes or a thumbs up um if you're not familiar with set it stands for student environment tasks and tools and the so what i do is i call it a set meeting that we have so parents and the educational team are engaged from the start i like parents to feel like they are a part of this process um, and they definitely implementation i feel is so much greater because they've been a part of it from the beginning so parents are invited to the set meeting that's where it all starts as well as the school team and outside therapists i do have an announcement going you guys understand I'm in a school, right? <laughs> um, so in advance, I do let the parents know what we're going to cover uh, at the meeting. They don't have to do anything in advance, but I do send this sheet home with the questions or the, the things that we're going, the information that we're going to gather together. 
they can jot things down if they want. Sometimes that makes them feel better to have that. Prior to the pandemic, this was a meeting in person. And the past two years, it's primarily been either via Zoom or hybrid, which has been absolutely excellent because I invite the, this is a picture of back in the day when I used to do it with chart paper, uh, post-it note chart paper, but um, it has been incredible. We invite the, um, the parents, anybody the parents want to bring, we highly encourage any outside therapists to be a part of this as well. We want them a part of the process from the beginning. And um, it's amazing how now via Zoom or hybrid, how we've gotten so many more people to be able to attend. You know, parents can pop in during work into the meeting. And the SEP meeting allows the team to continue to build trust and relationships with families. It gathers information about the student from the home and school perspectives to guide the team in making collaborative decisions. It allows families to share their struggles at home and priorities when it comes to communicating. It enables all involved to participate actively, creates an atmosphere where everyone's thoughts and observations are heard, valued, and respected. And this is my favorite part, that it helps get everyone on the same page. Since we approach it together from the beginning, it is our hope that everyone will be fully invested in following through with the tools and services we deem appropriate. So when do we use it? Um, if a core board with personal fringe is not meeting a student's communication needs, the student might need more robust vocabulary, voice output, ability to spell and alternative access. Um, prior to the set meeting, I get to know the student and I meet with the team if they, you know, a lot of times I'll join a team meeting, but most of the time I'm just getting in the classroom and I'm just starting to trial, you know, whether it's LAMP or another app. Um, and also we're looking at alternative access if that is needed. And then we take a lot of video. Um, most of our data collection for AAC use is all through videos. It's pretty powerful to see the progression of how students um, succeed with their device or um, really helps with what we, you know, showing partner skills, what we need to tweak. So we do have a lot of video samples and we utilize these at the set meeting. So this is an actual set that we did back in 2019. And um, I'm not going to, these are the actual slides. I'm not going to go through them word for word, but um, you have those slides, the full slides in your Google Drive folder. So for a student, we gather information about her, likes, motivators. This is where we're looking at access, vision, um, if they have, you know, OTPT, where the, you know, everybody is sharing all the information about, you know, access and needs. Environment, we know that communication is needed in every environment. So this is where we talk about what have they used in the past to support communication? What are they currently using? And we talk a lot about like pros and cons as well. And then I usually show a video of us trialing some things. This particular student was using partner assisted scanning for the sake of time. I'm not going to show it, but um, let's see what oh, and we talk about. What do they like to do as a family? You know, we make sure that we we talk about those environments. Under tasks, um, this is specific to communication. What do you want them to be able to communicate that they're not able to? And this is where we talk a lot about priorities. Again, I'm just cruising through for the sake of time, but you can look at these. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. For tools, um, this is where, of course, you're describing what um, features that uh, would work for the students, what modifications. We talk a lot about access and what we want to trial with the student here. And here I even ask like what their favorite color is because we want to make sure the case reflects their favorite color. Again, a great way to personalize it for the student. If we have trialed LAMP, now this particular student did need alternative access, um, but if we have trialed LAMP with a student you know, already in the classroom, already starting to use it with a student, then um, I jump right in at this point because we don't really need to talk about features because they're working. Maybe we talk a little bit about, hmm, do we need to hide some vocabulary? Do we need to make the margins large, larger? But um, besides that, this is where I, if, as long as I got everybody at this meeting, I just jump right into a, uh, a, a mini training. And I also provide families, I have a 28 minute video that I created that talks about partner skills and also um, the setup of LAMP as well. So then we go over, you know, this particular student was alternative access, we go over all different options that we may consider, and then as a team we all determine what is the best setup. Everybody gives their feedback, it's a really nice collaborative discussion. Um, then we talk about how to personalize it for the student. We chose a partner assisted setup for this particular student because we, she was working on um, access with eye gaze and also we were working on head control 
built into um, touch chat on the iPad, but we didn't want to limit her vocabulary and communication while working on access. So we wanted to give her as much robust vocabulary as possible while still working on access. So you can see this is what hers looked like originally. Next, then I go over next steps. Again, for the sake of time, I'm going to move on. Um, okay, so now parents are involved. They're, they know what AAC is. They are excited about trialing this with their students, but then it's all about the training and networking meetings for parents. So I'm excited to share some of the opportunities that we provide for our families. First, of course, are those individual family trainings. So following the SEP meeting, I do provide parents with um, a minimum of two personalized individual trainings just for their child. I invite the whole team. I encourage the whole team and outside providers to come. If they're not able to come, I do have videos that I share with them as well. And most of our staff is pretty comfortable and confident too. So if they're not able to come, the most important thing is getting the parents there, whether it's in person or via Zoom. The first meeting I, I ask, I say, I prefer that for you to be in person because we can get your hands on it and more comfortable. If they can't be there in person, I try to send a device home so they at least have that hands-on experience during the trainings. So during the first session, you know, this is kind of what our agenda looks like, overview of their device, overview of some partner skills tips, share tips for home use and hands-on exploration. The second session, I always start with updates from home and school and answer any questions that anybody has and then provide hands-on practice and additional partner skills. And of course, if the parents are apprehensive or feel they need additional support, I try not to overwhelm them with too much information at once. So I offer more trainings, of course. And there's just a couple things that I put in a couple slides that I share um, about those trainings. So I do always create a communication device guide, which I'll talk about when I cover resources in a moment. I always have a Google Slides presentation specific to that student and the families all get a copy of that. Um, and let's see what else is on here that all trainings are customized to the individual families. And I think I covered all that. There's just a, you know, a slide that I threw in to kind of see what the agenda looks like. We also do a daily note home and I threw this in there last minute because I feel like this is an important thing that if you don't do it, it's a great thing for families to when they first get the device. It's a great way for them to just get comfortable with the device getting out of the backpack and utilizing it for something during the day without a lot of pressure on them. And what it is is the school starts by um, this is an actual slide that I provide for families so the school. Um, shares a something about their child, the child coming from them um, that so they kind of work so if, if appropriate they work together on what they're going news they're going to share that happened at school that they want to share with their family at home. And um, and the team programs that in there so today, you know, Miss so and so came in and brought a dog into school today. And so, and then it's if the parents feel comfortable, then they program home news like over the weekend, I went to my grandma's and we did this. Um, and so it depends on the student and the team. Sometimes we just program this at the, um, you know, on Monday, on Mondays, the parent, the student will come in with their weekend news. And then on Fridays, they'll go home with their school news or some of my students, the families really, really enjoy this and they do it every day. So, um, so yeah, then I always have parents at the end like, whoo, that was a lot of information. Here's your top goals for the next session. And we really just kind of break it down and make it pretty basic, like have it out and within reach when possible. Make it fun, follow your child's lead and expand on their interests. And just take time to get to know the device and get comfortable with the vocabulary, like reading books and playing games and charging it. So kind of breaking it down like, hey, there was a lot of information, but here's your priorities right now. Here's an agenda for training number two. And my favorite part is that it does always start out with these updates from home and school and questions. And it's it's a great time to provide training within if they have specific questions, if there's something that's not working, if something's working really well at school, it's great for the parents to hear that, to help implement it at home. Those are the slides. And then I always ask too, is there any other personal vocab you wanna be added? Because we have kind of a running, um, Way, you know, parents know they can reach out to us at any time, but sometimes they they forget to do that. So it's a good time to do that. 
And then I always do an activity with the families, um, especially during the second training. So, all right, moving on to parent refresher group sessions. So the goal of this is to gain comfort with the device and modeling through hands-on practice. So we've already done those individual trainings, but we wanna make sure that we're constantly providing opportunities for families to get more hands-on practice, have little refreshers. And so this is just one of those opportunities. Um, and it's usually during the day without their child. So their child's in school and they come in during the day if they can. And it's usually either myself or a teacher or the speech and language pathologist that is the facilitators. And what we do is we share a few tips at the beginning, ask any or answer any questions, and then we have some activities that we provide just for more of that comfort level for that, you know, for when they're modeling, we want them to get comfortable. And so we have some fun activities we do. And then parents leave with tip sheets and more confidence with utilizing their child's device. So how this works is usually if one parent, a lot of times what I'll do is after the second training, I'll reach out to the families, you know, a couple of weeks later and just say, how's it going? Do you feel like you need more support? If they say yes, or if I hear from another team member, like, you know, this family would really like more training, then I always say, well, if one parent needs it, why not open it up to all parents um, in that school and have them come too? So it's been great. Some of the activities that we provide during these sessions, and these are also activities we do for staff and, and parent uh, staff as well for professional development, play games. We've been very creative with, um, we play core feud, we play wheel of core, we play password. There's lots of different cool uh, creative ways that we've provided professional development for families that make it fun um through song you know it's amazing i remember when i was learning sign language in college we had to sign a song well it's a great way to learn also your their child's device so we have core songs through our powerful words curriculum that we created in the district and we utilize these for practicing aac so um, the parents will go ahead and, and say the song with the bordered their child's device and then we'll play it to music and then they have to actually do it live to music. But we use this a lot for a lot of our professional developments. And if you haven't seen uh, Deidre Dobbles and I do Carpool Karaoke, we started that before the Closing the Gap many, many years ago on our way to Closing the Gap. And it's um, lots of people are, have, have done it now too. So it's pretty fun. So song is a great way to help parents get comfortable. And so are reading books. And reading books is usually a natural thing that they do with their child. Um, at the end of the day. So um, there are so many different books that are out there. I have tons of resources if you want some. I think I may even have some in the folder. Gretchen Storms is a great um, person to get books from. She's actually created sequenced um, books for different devices. So if the student was going to read, or the family was going to read this book, Funny Bunnies in the middle here, it actually shows you the sequence of how to say that, how to read the book with the Lamp Words for Life app. She has them for um, Touch Chat and I believe TD Snap and um, et cetera. And then AAC Language Labs has great books. There's so many resources for books, but just to be able to use the device to read the book is another excellent way to get comfortable. And then I do a lot of creating videos. So I try to create scenarios of situations that we have in school. So like typical, you know, snack time, lunch time. This is a video where the student has a hard time opening up the bag. So what could you model? If this was your child, what could you model while your child was actually doing that? Um, and so we do a lot of those where they're not as, it, it takes away the pressure of working directly with their child right away because they're just practicing with the video. So that's another. Thing that's worked well and then just different silent pd activities you know we'll have a a breakfast here and we'll provide the food and you can only use your child's device to talk to one another and sometimes we'll give different topics and different activities and then another thing that we do is individual family coaching so we provide this virtually while they're at home or in um, or in person sometimes we've done this in their home or in the community where um, we've offered this as an alternative to parent teacher conferences, and we've also provided it during institute days or provide via zoom with our um, and for our EC students they only come half day so we sometimes do it the other half of the day. But um, this all came out of COVID so this is something that we started doing during um, 
when we were all under quarantine and it was so great that now we're offering it for families outside of that. So what parents do is they send in videos of their child or send an email with more information about um, when 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 communication breakdowns occur it's amazing now that we carry our phones everywhere with us how parents we get some videos right on the spot where the you know the students shutting down or the students upset or this happens um or if they're if, if it's even just a regular activity they're doing they'll send us a quick email about it or a video of what that looks like so we watch the video and then we come up with tips and ideas and we share them via email or have a zoom meeting to share ideas with families and then what we like to do our second session is actually have them do that activity with their child via zoom or in person and we coach them on the spot while they're doing the activity and that's been really fun I feel like 50 to 60 percent of the time they're cooking um, and then other times they're doing usually like a, a fun game or art activity. Um, these are some of the uh, other activities that they've done even like outside i've had families be outside on their playground on their swing set and we're like trying to coach them um, whether that that's usually in person but um, even going to a restaurant together getting a haircut things like that and then um, you could read through this slide on your own but this is an example of the tips shared via email in between the in the sessions Pre-recorded videos, I've mentioned those already. Those have been so powerful. I try to create videos that are very short, two minutes or less videos, or um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll create a video. I have my, as I mentioned, my Lamp Words for Life app, um, partner skills and app training that's 28 minutes or less. So usually they're 30 minutes or less or two minutes or less. And um, they're great to add to your newsletter. We add QR codes and bit.ly links to our newsletters each month. And it's been great. Parents have really said how much they appreciate that. Um, some additional videos we share, uh, as I mentioned, seeing videos of their child communicating at school is very powerful. And then also videos of staff modeling on their child's device in school is also very powerful with their child. And um, we also share video modeling videos. I mentioned our Powerful Words curriculum. Uh, Deidre Dobbles and I have worked together on that. And she um, she's created so many great visuals. And part of it is these video modeling videos for each one of the videos. It's actually her children modeling using those in different scenarios. So we send those via Seesaw Home to families, depending on what target words we're working on. And um, this is an example at our elementary school. Uh, the, the teachers do it a little bit different with actual um, staff members that they work with. We have you know, certain words or phrases that we're, we will quickly do a video of how to say it so they, the families see the video of that. And then I just love, if you haven't seen Chris Bouguet's video on aided language simulation explained, it's a short video on YouTube, less than three minutes. And it's, it's just a, a great way to show families it's a family and it shows the power of modeling in a, in a Powtoon uh, cartoon. All right, one of my most favorite nights ever is family fun night. We have ours coming up. We just booked it for May 2nd of this year. We usually do it these at least one time in the spring. And um, the goal of family fun night is to gain comfort of their child's device and learn partner skills through hands-on activities that they can do at home. So we invite all families of students with complex communication needs, whether they're using a non-electronic core board all the way through a dynamic display device and everything in between, any type of AAC, we invite those families to come. And we include, we ask them to, you know, bring siblings, have the child that uses AAC, um, of course, come with. And, and anybody else they would like to bring, we've had grandparents and aunts and uncles, it's been great. Uh, the sessions are in the evening and we do provide child care for our younger siblings so our high school students that need volunteer hours come and they volunteer for us and I do have my core vocabulary committee that um, are, there were like the coaches on the spot so how this how this looks is the same structure each time but different content and activities I provide a short training on a specific topic at the beginning and then I do we do hands-on activities that they take home and I've also brought in an adult AAC user. Um, I think I might contact Krista. She's one of my friends and maybe I'll have her come in for May because yeah, she's phenomenal. Chris Klein has joined twice 
And he has really been a game changer for, for families to see adults that are successful, that are happy, that are AAC users communicating with their devices. I think that's just so powerful. So um, I highly recommend bringing in an AAC user if you have that opportunity. And um, it was great. So he would talk to he talked to the group, spoke to the group, shared tips and ideas. And then it was awesome, not only for our families to ask questions, but it was so cool for my AAC users to be able to see him and ask questions to him. That's that was awesome. So yeah, maybe I'll bring in Krista. I'll see if she's available. <laughs> um, and then this is just an example of one of the family fun night agendas. So usually it's an hour and a half. We start out the beginning with going over just an overview of a specific topic. And then we have three breakout sessions and um, the parents choose two to go to. So um, I go over what the breakout sessions are. What we usually do is for each one of the breakout sessions, they actually then we coach them on the spot doing that activity with their child and we'll model as well. And, and then they get to take that activity home with them. So some examples, you actually have one of these games in your um, in your folder, a cord out game. So some examples are games that we've either created our own, downloaded them from like this one's from AAC Language Lab. We've created cards for games. So every family, most of a lot of families have, you know, Candyland. Why not create the cards for Candyland and send those home or headbands? Um, Tower Hill Reader is an excellent resource for books as well. So a lot of times we'll download books from Tower Hill Reader, Reader, print those out for parents and they get to take those home. And then during our talking with toys activity, we try to find toys that are appropriate for all ages because we do have students from three through 22 there. And um, so simple things you can buy on Amazon in bulk like wind up toys and bubbles and kinetic sand. Um, so that has been fun. This is the flyer I just created yesterday and just sent out to families for our one coming up in May. And our topic is primarily going to be on shared reading because like I said, we're doing so much with comprehensive literacy. We want families to feel very comfortable with modeling while supporting their children in shared reading. And here's a variety of topics that we have provided. They've included and also um, any chance I can get to present at anything, you know, I found out at our early learning center, they have these um, ELC community conversations once a month and I was like, can I get on there for one of those so in October I did provide one of those for our families at our early learning center. And then another one that has just been such a game changer so exciting is our monthly virtual parent support group. Um, we call it parents and professionals partnering together. And this is via zoom and it's this is just a screenshot of, of one of them that we did. So it's a monthly virtual parent support group meeting and the goal behind these are parents making connections and creating a community with other parents of students that use AAC. Reduce the feelings of isolation or disconnection due to small numbers of students using AAC in you know neighborhood schools that get to know more people that have children that use AAC and building group wisdom among support group members. So parents develop more confidence in supporting their child at home and in school. They're learning from one another. They build relationships. Oh, it, I really like this. It really does help, again, build like that comfort level and relationships between the district staff and parents in the district. It incorporates ongoing training opportunities on AAC skills and knowledge. It increases parents' comfort level and confidence. And then this is my favorite part, um, the parent networking portion of it, and I'm going to show you some of those slides, is so cool because it's parents supporting parents. It's not us as the experts sharing, this is what you should do. Parents ask one another questions, and then parents, it's really hard for my, um, my colleagues and I to hold back and not answer the question, but we utilize our wait time, and we allow parents then to answer other parents' questions. And it's really cool to see how empowered our 21 year old parents, you know, parents of 21 year olds are, are helping with students that just received device, a device the week before um, and everything in between. So it's it's really a cool opportunity. So we do this via Zoom. There's one session a month at the same time. Parents the last two years have decided on 8.30 a.m. We're actually hosting one next Thursday during parent teacher conferences and it's at 5 p.m. because I wanted to try and see if we can get even more people. Um, in, in the night session. We provide professional development on a different topic each session. 
and I schedule them for 45 minutes, but they often go long. And it all starts off with a survey that we send to parents to determine the topics and interests for the year. So here's an example of the survey that I send out. And this is the flyer for my Thursday one. And um, so it has the date, it gets, I put the Zoom, I make it the Zoom link into a QR code and a bit.ly so it's super easy for them to access. Parents are all emailed this as well as a um, paper copy that's sent home as well and put in the students' backpacks. So some additional information about our parent group. Parents have access to a Google Drive folder with the slides from each session as, we, as well as resources that we go over. They have an option then also we have a, um, a contact information sheet. They can add their contact information. So if they wanna contact one another outside of the meetings. And this year we are planning to provide more breakout rooms. We've done more breakout rooms um, with some additional facilitators. It started with just another speech and language pathologist and I doing it the last couple of years. And um, we're gonna start doing some breakout rooms where we might um, have the parents break out um, either by device type or age group or comfort level. And so we're excited to offer those as well. So here's the structure of what these meetings look like. First, we start with introductions. Parents share their name and any information they wanna share about their child. They answer an icebreaker question, which has been fun. And then we go over group guidelines. You're gonna see an example of these in a moment. Uh, then we go over the topic of the month. We only take about 15 minutes because again, it's really more about that parent networking time. And then that parent networking time, that community building and group wisdom, give them time to ask questions and answer one another's questions. And again, we offer them to, we encourage them to answer the questions versus us. And then we wrap up and share final thoughts. And of course, the next meeting date and topic. Topics we've included. And these are the actual slides from one of our sessions that you have. Again, I'm not going to go through all of all of these for the sake of time, but um, you know, we introduce ourselves, go over the agenda, uh, go over the link to the folder. We always have quotes for families. We always want to encourage them and make them feel, you know, um, I love this one. It says, give yourself grace. So I hope you know you are doing better than you than you think you are, you know. And then we share the goals of the group, the structure for the meeting, group expectations. I think this is an important one for me not to, to go right over um, or skip through because um, it is important. We say this regardless if it's the same parents every time we go over these. So group expectations, please keep stories and conversations confidential. Everyone's AAC journey is different. Be mindful of outside noise, of, case, of course we're on Zoom, right? Um, but ask questions about AAC and helping to support your child with a device. If you have specific questions about your child's IEP, you can discuss those outside of this group time with your IEP team. So this is an example of the slide that for check-ins and introductions, you know, they shared their name, what their child um, used to support communication. And then we had them rate, how confident do you feel about supporting your child with um, their devices? And then the icebreaker questions. This one was fantastic actually, because it really helped other families share your local family restaurant you like to go to as a family. And we discovered there's actually a restaurant about 20 minutes from here that is created specifically for people with sensory needs. I thought that was really cool. And then I'm just gonna skip through these. You can see you have all of these slides. These are the actual slides from one of the presentations that we've shared. Feel free to ask me any questions you have after you review them, if you have any. And this is one of the activities we had them do before the parent networking. Think about a routine you plan to do to build you know, your device in anyone wanna share. It's great for families to hear, oh, I didn't even think about it. So when you're in the bathroom brushing teeth, that is a great opportunity because they can't you know, talk or you know, whatever. And then that networking time. What questions do you have for the group? And then here's that contact sheet. They can click on it in the slides and add their information. And of course, I always say, please email me if you need any additional training or for any, any coaching, any support. And then we at the end, don't, don't stress, have fun, start small, mistakes are welcome. Always those words of encouragement, you can do it. <laughs> and then the next meeting day. All right, moving on to resources that we provide families. Um, so, 
We, as I mentioned, every time I do an individualized training for families, the school staff and the parents all receive a personalized student device guide that I created, as well as like their non-electronic backup of their device. I take screenshots of their device and we print those out and put them in page protectors and put them in a binder. And in that binder includes their communication device guide. And it's basically a summary of the trainings in, um, in like a four-sided sheet of paper, depending on the app that the student's using or the device that they're using. So um, let's see, this is an example of what that looks like. I always start with goals of the meeting, the setup of their device. Um, we do a lot of hands-on practice, so you'll see that embedded throughout, throughout my device guide and um, talk about, you know, what, what were the the task portion of the set. What were the specific things that you wanted to target when it comes to communication? Let's practice those. Let's talk about scenarios where you would use those and, and get your hands on it. This particular student used partner assisted scanning. Um, and so it was a setup that we created um, based off of the pod for her. Parents really wanted it to be electronic and they wanted it to very personalized. And so we created our own, um, but yeah, there's, all that information in there. This is what her system looks like. This is the same student as the set. So again, look through it, ask me any questions you have. Um, bag of resources. I bought, bought on bulk on Amazon um, pillowcases and books. And before the first training for par parents, I always fill these bags. I put a screenshot of their main page and I like to put feelings because we always like to talk about how we're feeling as like their main, um, their main board on here. So the fringe is feelings. There's a question on there, how do you feel? And then a screenshot of their main page of their device. And then in there are, you know, the device guide, low tech backups of, backups of the boards and a variety of other things that I'm gonna share with you right now. All the families do get a personalized Google Drive folder as well. I can't, I'm thank goodness Google is unlimited as far as <laughs> access because I have so many things in Google. Um, and it's nice for families because the paper copies are great, but be able to always know that they can go back and access these books and print them out on their own or access those, um, the directions on how to do things, the videos. They want to share the videos with the caregivers or any other family members. They're right there at their fingertips. And then we, um, AAC Language Labs has some great things for families in there. They, one of the sheets they have is using core words at home. And so we've created our own based off of the type of system a student's using in the visuals. Um, so you can see we've divided it up by the activity and then here's specific things that you can model at home during that activity. My colleague Deidre Dobbles wrote a grant um, through our educational foundation and she created these awesome toy and game bins for our students. And this is an excellent thing to provide families at, you know, initially at the training, initial training, explain what they are and send your first one home and then swap them out as needed. But basically they're a bin of toys or games that we send home to help support students with uh, core vocabulary and AAC implementation. The kit includes instructions, the actual activity, the objects for the activity, target words and visual supports for modeling. And the goal is for the families to work on one or two core words a week with the toys and have everything right there in the bin at their fingertips. And what we love is even if they're really into baby dolls, this hopefully is a totally different baby doll. So it's a little more novel and something different than what they have at home. And we encourage the parents to continue to provide, um, continue to model these words throughout the week with different toys and activities as well. So it's like giving them this nice little package here, practice with this, but then you continue to do that with, you know, their favorite toys at home as well. So here's an example. And these are the target words that we have for some of these little objects. These are just inexpensive things that we've found on Amazon. So like, for example, the target words when playing with the baby alive is more and done etc. And we have little visuals that go with as well. So they they're sequenced out for their devices. We do have a variety of staff send out weekly and monthly newsletters. This is just an example of one. They're the same structure. They tend to be the same structure. They go over what the target words are. They have a little video model clip. We talk about in there, you know, the next um, virtual parent networking group that's on there and some modeling tips. And then that just changes up. So here's a variety of different ones. One of, when we first started our core initiative, one of our teachers created the Mythbusters of core vocabulary. There was a popular show back in the day called Mythbusters. And so that was a clever way for her to teach families about core vocabulary. 
There are many that are pre-made. Cough Drop and Toby Dynavox, there's some examples right there. Go on their websites. They have great ones that are already made for you. This is one that a team over at one of our elementary schools does. The whole team puts together a newsletter once a month, and um, the speech and language pathologist has a section here specifically on core words and AAC implementation. And this is another tool that she uses, um, our, a lot of our speech and language pathologists use to communicate, as I mentioned, communicate often. <laughs> I mentioned books. Here are a ton of resources to get those books to help families with comfort level of their device. So you have the resources here, Google them. They're all excellent resources that you can print and use or share digitally. I mentioned games. We do so much with games. It's so fun. Um, we like to core out our games. So like this one on the top left is from Super Duper. And all we did was put the core words on the game. They roll the dice, they get to that word, they say it with the device. Um, and sometimes we'll say, okay, then if they're higher level, we'll say, say it in a free phrase using that word. Or um, I like to core out games. So Kerplunk is now core plunk. Then there's actual words on the balls. And then when they get that ball, they say that word. We've, um, you know, knowing people's names are so important and calling people by name. So we've taken like guess who and we've adapted that with the, the pictures of all the people in the school and their friends. And then, as I mentioned, you have this activity. It was one of the free resources from AAC Language Labs and Lesson Picks um, in your folder. Some additional core visuals for home. We always, I always have in that initial bag a core board or screenshot of the student's main page to put on their fridge, put in the play, you know, anywhere around the house. We'll put together boards for families with um, fringe that goes with specific activities. So like in the playroom, we'll have some of their favorite toys at the top. On the playground even, they have laminated boards with fringe that goes with the playground. We send home placemats. This one I love, we specifically, um, split the core board in half because we were noticing the students food and drink were right in the middle of their words. So if you split it, then you can put everything in the middle. So we send those home. Also, just a lot of families will ask them, what are some common phrases that you feel like you need support with, you know, modeling on your child's device. And so I'll quickly put those, um, I'll create scripts for families and print those out and then send those home so they can practice some of those phrases with modeling. We have visual supports that we put, you know, have around the school and we provide those for home too. Like, I need help, please, giving them those visual reminders um, for communication they can use. Some of our students too, again, this is more for the partners and the parents versus the students, but we'll put scripts of common phrases and social language on their actual device for just a nice visual for families. When we have our powerful words curriculum, um, words that we're targeting, targeting, parents will get sent home the information in the newsletter, but also a sheet that gives you the target word and phrases you can model using that word. And there's just a few other ones. This is a free one that you can get from Practical AAC. When we are targeting words too, we'll even just print out the, um, the words on a label and we'll put it right on the student, right on the outside of their coat or their shirt. So right when they walk in, even before they get their um, backpack out, the parents know what the target words are. So that, that often helps them with modeling as well, not being so overwhelmed. And there's so many great visuals out there. Like this one's great. Hey parents, it's okay if you don't have all of the answers. And um, so this is by the AAC coach. She has some other great ones for specific family activities and words that you could model. So definitely check those out. You don't have to create your own. And um, I always, I love using bit.ly links and QR codes. This will take you right to a link. Um, so some parents even like to put stuff like this on their fridge after I go over training, you know, those top tips that you walk away from um, and a video link. And there are so many, oh yeah. Am I running out of time? Yeah, we have one minute left. Um, and I think we can go a little bit over, but um, I'm wondering um, if if there's any kind of summary you want to do or sure. uh, if there are folks who have questions before we have to sign off. And there are a few questions in the chat. Okay, I'll just um, real quick buzz through these last slides. These are just additional. You can, by looking at the slides, you'll know exactly what um, what this is. But ask. let me know if you have any other questions. I have blogs and sites that we share with families as well. And then also some of those quotes we'd love to share with them. So go ahead, ask, ask away. I'm done. <laughs> that was good timing. 
Um, Joy Hearn asked if we could attend one of your parent Zoom trainings. Ooh, you know, I would say a training, absolutely. Um, if you email me, I can let you know. A The networking, I like to try, like even some of our administrators have asked, like, I'd love to see that, can I, can I join? And I'm like, anybody that would be from the outside that isn't really part, of, I want parents to be able to talk and feel comfortable. And so like with the networking, I'd probably say no, but with something more like a training, of course, the more the merrier, as long as the parents are okay with it, I am. So you can shoot me an email and I'm happy to share. That would be great. Um, and I think there was another one. Um, is how long are your modeling videos? You you mentioned you, you made situational videos, things that happen at school, like having a hard time with the getting something open. Like how long do you make yeah, those videos? Think I usually say my videos are two minutes or less um, for those type of videos. I have some that are nine seconds even. And if the parents know in advance, like if you say, this is a, a this is a 30 second video for you to watch, they're most likely going to watch it if it's less. I'd rather send more videos that are shorter. And I know I feel like I'm the same way. You know, if I know this is only two minutes, of course I'm gonna watch it or if it's 20 minutes or, um, so yeah, my, my rule of thumb is two minutes or less, but like I said, some of it had been as short as 10 seconds. <laughs> yes. Yeah, bite so, size. That's been a theme. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I want to, uh, encourage you to look at the, at the Google folder for this particular session, the handout folder that we mentioned earlier, and we've put, excuse me, we put the link in, uh, a couple of times that it's just full as you can imagine of great resources and great ideas that Kelly has shared with us and um I what I wish is that we could download your brain into that folder because it's been just such a such a whirlwind of good ideas um but I thank you Kelly so much for being well, here Thank you for having and, uh, me. Oh, what a treat. And, um, you know, we we know that you have a, a million skills we could have chosen, but I'm really glad that, that we focused on this topic with you because uh, there's just so many resources that'll be available to folks. I think we'll uh, close the recording now, at, but if people want to stay on and have a conversation or...